we're going to go ahead and kick off the event. Hopefully everyone here is excited um, to be a part of our Spring 21 New Grad Boot Camp. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate our class of Spring 21 on all of your accomplishments. Uh, and we're very excited uh, to support you today with your next step post-graduation and entering the workforce. So thank you for joining us. Uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Larissa Bates. I will be the host for today's event. I am also the career counselor for business, financial services, and logistics. So shout out to my college of business students in the room. And then I'll pass it over to Carrie to introduce herself. Hello, um, welcome. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Carrie McKnight, and um, I'm the Kirk Counselor for Graduate Students and Alumni, and I'm the co-host of supporting uh, Larissa today at our event. Thank you again for joining us. Awesome. All right. Uh, just a few kind of guidelines for today. Um, do make sure to complete that Google form that's in the chat so that we can follow up with you post-event. Uh, we do ask that you keep your audio and video muted uh, and we'll prompt you when it's okay to take that off during the breakout rooms. But for now, um, we do ask that you keep that off. And then if you do have questions for the uh, panelists, uh, please do put those in the chat. Um, we'll have time set aside for Q&A. Um, we'll, we'll address some of those questions, but we do ask if it is addressed to a specific panelist uh, that you do mention their name and that. All right, a quick overview of what to expect for today. So we're gonna go through some quick uh, resources um, for the career center so that you know what is available to you uh, as a recent grad. We'll dive into our alumni and employer panel. Uh, we'll have that time for audience Q&A, and then we'll break out into our networking hour uh, for smaller meet and greet sessions. And then finally, we'll close with our survey and final announcements for upcoming events and activities. All right. So uh, as grads, uh, I know one of the things that is on the top of your mind is your next steps. And I just want to remind you that you do have access to the Career Center for one year post-graduation for appointments. So if you haven't had time to pop in, just know that we are available and we are open uh, virtually this summer. So do come meet with us. Uh, again, if you completed that sign-in form, that's how we're able to track that you attended today and follow up with information such as the slide deck and the other resources um, that we're going to be sharing with you. Um, also, we know that sometimes being alone in the job search can be a little bit overwhelming. So we will be offering this summer a job search club. Uh, if you would like to join that and develop a plan for your job search, as well as network uh, with other students that are kind of in the same space, uh, we highly encourage you to participate. Uh, space will be limited, so if you're interested, uh, you're going to want to email Carrie as soon as possible uh, in order to get added to that list. And we do want people that are going to be engaged, so there's five meetings that will happen during the summer, and we would like you to attend all of those. Again, more information will be included uh, in the follow-ups uh, post event. And the last thing I want to put on your radar is our Career Center apps. So you will continue to have access to Handshake to search for positions for one year post-graduation uh, for free. You also have access to our mentoring platform where you can connect with alumni and other professionals. We have two awesome alumni that are here uh, to talk with you today that are on that platform. Uh, there's also a uh, focus to and big interview for your career exploration and interview practices as well. Um, VMOC right now is not open to recent grads, uh, just so you're aware if you're trying to access that platform, uh, I would encourage you to meet with uh, myself or another career counselor to get help with resume support. All right, so just kind of a few quick uh, resources there. And now we're going to go ahead and dive into our panel. So I'm going to ask Rachel, Kristen, and Rashad to go ahead uh, and turn your videos on. 
Awesome. There we go. Great, so now I can see all of you. Uh, so we're gonna uh, get started. We have a couple preset questions for our panelists. Uh, if you have questions, students, that come up as we are going through our preset questions, please do throw those in the chat uh, and we'll address as many of those as possible during the audience Q&A portion. All right, so let's get it kicked off with introductions. I would love to hear a little bit about our panelists. So our first question is to basically introduce yourself, your name, major, uh, current job title, company, uh, and a little bit about what you currently do. And I will pass it to Rashad, just kick us off. Thanks, Larissa. And uh, I wanna say congratulations to all the, all the recent graduates out there. I know that was a, 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 a long road. Uh, oh, and happy June, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I know that the, um, getting into college was a challenge, right? You had SATs, you had all, all these tests to get through, and, and now you made it to this point. So uh, my, my hat's off to you. Yeah, Rashad Wiley here, as you can saw, I graduated in 2010. Uh, my business, my, my major was business administration with a concentration in finance. And uh, one of the reasons why I chose finance, because initially I wanted to be a stockbroker, uh, but after graduation, I didn't want to move all the way to New York. I could have done that here. But um, while I was at San Jose State, I, I was part of the Banking and Investment Association, part of the business department, and I got exposed to other financial institutions. And I said I was the president of that organization. So uh, that's how I kind of fell into financial, uh, the financial services industry. Uh, right now, I currently work for Star One Credit Union. Uh, I have over uh, 13 years of financial services experience, been with Star One for about four years now. And uh, my job title is community and business development representative. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but uh, I get to go out and represent uh, over 111,000 members in the, uh, or customers, member, we call them members in the credit union world. Uh, but, and we all have over 200 employees. So my job is to go out and represent the credit union in, in, in community events, um, or um, I also do brand awareness, public relations, um, corporate philanthropy as well. So I'm in charge of one of our, our um, I'm a chair of our, of our community involvement committee, which is responsible for, for supporting charitable organizations in the, in the Bay Area. Uh, we have a budget of over $900,000. And uh, so far this year, we've given away about half of that. And so um, I get the, you know, I basically have the funnest job in the credit union. I get to go out and just represent and just speak, uh, speak about the credit union industry. And we also do financial wellness education too as well. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I love that you shared a little bit about your story and how you originally thought you were going to go in one pathway and through kind of getting different experiences and exposure, you ended up uh, in a different space, but in a space that you enjoy and that you love. I love that you said you had like the most fun job. Uh, it definitely sounds like you get to have a lot of fun things in that role. So thank you for sharing, Rashad. Uh, I'm going to pass it to Rachel next to introduce herself. I will follow Rashan's um, approach. First of all, congratulations to all of them. I was in the same boat last year. Actually, I just got my master from San Jose State yeah, in industry organizational psychology um, in like last May, which is 2020, during the pandemic. But I also got my undergrad degree here at San Jose State. I just love San Jose State. I never <laughs> wanted to leave. That's why I come back and continue being a mentor, being a panelist for various events. Um, with that said, I mentioned my master's degree is in I.O. psychology and my bachelor actually is in I.O. and minor in business. So currently I'm working at Intuit. If people do not know Intuit, uh, it is the maker of TurboTask, QuickBook, and me, uh, all this financial software. Um, we have about 10,000 employees and I'm sitting at the HR department focusing on data analysis, research, et cetera, to help how to improve employee well-being, how to improve employee job satisfaction, productivity, looking at all different types of data uh, for my day-to-day -day job. And that is a very high level for what I do. You feel free to ask any questions. 
Awesome. Thank you, Rachel, for sharing. And I love that you're kind of also in a financial space, but then kind of like a different kind of role where you're supporting kind of like your your internal customers, right? Your employees uh, and figuring out ways to make them um, happy and, you know, well uh, balanced in their roles. So thank you for sharing a little bit about that. And then Kristen, I'll pass it over to you. Not last, but least, not least. <laughs> Thank you, Larissa, and congratulations to all the grads. Um, my name Olson, and um, my major um, when I was in school was healthcare, and I did go, I did receive a position at Kaiser Permanente. I've been at Kaiser for 22 years now, I think, um, and most of my time with Kaiser Permanente has been in recruitment. Um, and currently I am recruiting for all nursing leadership positions. Um, I recruit for Northern, Southern California, also Northwest. Um, we recruit nationally now. So um, I have handled um, Hawaii before and also Georgia. So many different positions within the organization, but right now nursing leadership. Awesome. I'm sure Hawaii was amazing to recruit for <laughs> and maybe have some connections for some students uh, today. That's really awesome. Thank you for sharing. You. Uh, so our next question is any advice or tips uh, that you would give to students searching for jobs, internships, considering the current health and economic situation. So we know that we're still kind of in the midst of COVID and recovering at this point. Uh, and a lot of students are kind of worried that there aren't a lot of opportunities out there. Um, so what are some tips and advice that you might share? Uh, Rashad, do you want to kick this one off? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and uh, it looks like we got a full house today. So congratulations to everybody for, uh, for showing up. Um, yeah, when I, was at, when I was at San Jose State, I didn't have any internships. I know they had the, the career fairs. And then also have the a great resource. The career center is, is, a, is a great resource, but it, it was still challenging because um, jobs and internships for um, almost graduates or recent graduates is very very challenging, right? Because you have so many um, people trying to apply for some of the jobs that you might want to have. And so, uh, I would say it, it kind of all starts with with your uh, with your student life. Because when I, I couldn't, I, I was still you know, applying for internships and jobs, but um, it's be, I was very active in the student organizations. So I was the president of the Banking and Investment Association. I also was a treasurer of, of um, another organization too as well. And uh, that pretty much was a way for me to separate myself from my peers because it showed that I was involved in extracurricular activities. So I would hope that anybody who's, who's here has done some of that uh, ahead of time, just kind of uh, whether it be volunteering or doing something like that. So that's kind of how I was able to um, get, get into the banking or financial services industry. Uh, I was, went through a competitive program. At, my initial first job at a college was U.S. Bank, and it was a, a leadership development program. It was highly competitive. There was like eight out of 200 people, and I was able to get in and kind of jumpstart my career there. But it was because I was I was very active with the with the student organizations. So even though I didn't have internships, I was still they showed that uh, I had those extracurricular activities and networking too as as, as well with those organizations too. The the, the Banking Investment Association uh, they brought a whole bunch of different people from different business lines uh, within the financial services industry, CFOs, uh, C level people as well as just other positions you would never think about. But to answer this question specifically, uh, I always want to recommend that students, for one, you can find a company that's going to go public, you know, <laughs> try to do that too as well. You know, there's, there's, this is Silicon Valley. You live in one of the um, most resourceful places in the, in the country. So if you f find, find a company that you'd like to do and then, you know, eventually eight years down later, you stay with that company, get you some shares, we'll go public. But also... I would recommend to looking at at nonprofits. Uh, nonprofits definitely always looking for volunteers in some of the positions. Uh, you might find an organization that is near and dear to your heart, to where um, it lines up lines up with your values. Uh, they don't always post the positions that, that they have, but there's over 200 nonprofits uh, just within this county alone. So 
look for definitely look look at uh, look at nonprofits as resources, uh, you know, as far as entry level, uh, and then also look for positions for with the city. So the city of San Jose, the city of La, the town of Los Gatos, the uh, city of Sunnyvale, they also have um, uh, positions that, that you can look to towards as well. So that would be that would be my the number one advice if uh, if you can't find companies that you want to align with, look into the city and look, also look into um, the nonprofit sector as well. Awesome. Yeah, I think there's always a lot of focus on like the big tech companies, but there's a lot of other uh, employers in this space that students can take advantage of. Um, I did put a link to Idealist uh, in the chat. That is one of the leading platforms where nonprofits uh, and NGOs post their opportunities. And then also if you Google Angelist, uh, they tend to post jobs on there for startups. So if you're interested in either of those spaces, I would recommend checking those out. Uh, and I do want to go back to something that Rashad said at the beginning, uh, is that he was very involved on campus. I do want to highlight that that experience, uh, if we did not get internships, right, obviously helped him be successful. Um, but even if you weren't able to be involved on campus, uh, look to your coursework, the projects that you did in your classes, uh, sometimes those also are things that have helped you build skills that you can use now to launch your career. Uh, Kristen, I think I saw your hand if you wanted to kind of add uh, something or kind of uh, additional kind of resources for students. Um, I would just say um, definitely going back to volunteering. Um, you know, nonprofit organizations do do volunteering. I know Kaiser Permanente does that. So if you're interested in nursing or any other positions within Kaiser Permanente, um, we do offer um, volunteering. Um, it's through our volunteer um, department. Also, I would say maybe adopting a mentor. A mentor um, would be someone that you could look up to that could guide you as well. And also joining professional organizations in like LinkedIn and connecting to people um, is very important. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit more about like networking and maybe like some tips, some quick tips in that space for students? So um, regarding networking, um, I would say LinkedIn, um, getting your um, name out there, connecting with other people. Um, also, um, what I was um, adopting the mentor, like I was saying, you know, the mentor could um, provide you additional people that maybe that you can be in contact with to help you and guide you as well. Awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of students hear that networking word and it's a little scary, but I think it's really important to kind of know that there are people out here um, that are willing to help and support you with those next steps. Uh, I have a feeling that many of us on uh, the panel and in the room today have served in mentor capacities at some point for someone else. So just to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, Rashad, did I see your hand? Yeah, if you yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for bringing, Kristen, thanks for bringing that, uh, LinkedIn up too, and, and reiterating for the nonprofits. Uh, LinkedIn is very uh, is, is a um, it's like it's like it's like the new Facebook. It's, there's there if you don't have a, if you don't have a LinkedIn page, uh, get one. I was told a long time by a recruiter that uh, if you don't have a LinkedIn page, you're probably not going to get hired. So at least have something all, out there. They kind of want to see if you're a real person. But definitely, uh, if you don't have LinkedIn. They have so many uh, professional groups out there that that you can use well. And then another reason why I was saying nonprofits too, because uh, a lot of these nonprofits have have a, a board of directors, and the, the board of directors is um, sometimes made up of people at, at companies that you want to work at. So when it comes down to networking, uh, you know, if they if, if they see you, oh, you volunteer at this organization, they kind of um, stuff can find a can fall in place for you. Yeah, I really love that tip. Um, right, like just being creative about your job search and kind of going at it in multiple different ways from networking, uh, to volunteering, um, to kind of, you know, also kind of uh, maybe looking at some pathways that were maybe not in your kind of immediate view, right, like idealists for nonprofits, city jobs, um, right, those are all great opportunities. 
Uh, so thank you for sharing. I'm going to move on to the next question, uh, which is how can students best prepare for virtual interviews? So we do know we've kind of shifted uh, and a lot of people are now in this online space uh, for interviewing and are really concerned about like what to do, like do they use virtual background, do they have, you know, a, a space in their room or a house that they use. So uh, Rachel, if you don't mind sharing a few of your tips and advice uh, for students for virtual interviewing. Um, sure. So I think, first of all, I think the most important thing to prepare yourself is to set realistic expectations and goals, especially if you're looking for a full-time job. Sometimes you need to go through five or six or even seven rounds of interview. Don't think, oh, I passed one round and I nailed it. Then uh, most of the time, according to my own experience, it's not that case. And actually, there's a lot of resources. Uh, San Jose State uh, Career Center provide or San Jose State provide, for example, LinkedIn Learning. That's quite a lot of courses you can you can take to prepare yourself like for those frequently asked uh, interview questions, behavioral question, uh, uh, situational questions, so you can best prepare yourself, you don't get caught off the graph, and also find some people, or your best friend, your best classmate, or your mother, father, whoever, your family members, to help you to uh, prepare uh, for the interview. You will just do those mock interview with them, and of course, not last but not least, Go to career center. They are professionals. They are, they are here to help you. And back to what Kristen mentioned, adopt a mentor is also not a great way. You don't necessarily just focus on one mentor. You can get multiple mentors. Like just, but you kind of need to have a thick skin. Do not be afraid to be being rejected because you need to understand everyone has their life. Especially during COVID, during the pandemic, everyone's like have heavy workload and like all, talks, all sorts of things, uh, be more respectful. It didn't work out, but it's still a great way to connect with people. In this case, you can just get no, like, but it worth to try. That's it. Yeah, I really appreciate uh, you sharing that there's different mentors that have different skill sets, right? Uh, so you might have one mentor to help you with your resume and another who's going to really help you refine your interview practice. Uh, and I think that's really important to know that this is a skill, right? So I love that you mentioned LinkedIn Learning and some of the courses that they can take on there to learn more about interviewing. Uh, Carrie did put a link in the chat to Big Interview, which is a platform that we have through the Career Center to practice your interviewing. Uh, but really to kind of you know, put yourself out there, practice, get comfortable with the space uh, so that you're feeling confident uh, going forward. Uh, and then Rashad, did you have a few things to maybe add to the conversation? Yes, yes, yes. And, and I think there was also a, qu a question for, for Kristen in the chat from Michael, um, uh, quite a mentor, but um, I'm also, I, I, I forgot to mention that, I'm also part of the, uh, the, the SJSU mentor program too as well. Uh, so uh, that is definitely a, a great resource. Tap into the, 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 uh, the alumni network um, I'm on the. I just. I just. I just. I just was. Uh, I just got on the board of the of the alumni association. I'm very proud of that. I'm gonna be able to be on there for for three years now. So, um, San Jose State definitely has a, has a lot of resources in that respect when it comes to mentors. Uh, but how can students prepare for in person or virtual interviews? That's a good question. Uh, always do your research on uh, on the company. Uh, if you know the person who's going to be uh, who you're interviewing with, you know. The, one of the great questions I always ask is just is just is just um, what are some of the biggest challenges or obstacles of the job or you know find find some creative questions that you not not too many but just kind of questions because the interviews are two way interviews I know it sounds like when you're a student you're just like you're just you're nervous or that but it's it's, it's, it's you want to look at it as uh, is you're, 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 interviewing, you're interviewing the company too as well. We definitely show up on time. Uh, virtual background, I would say, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, 
racial question can I, I, I would say virtual background would be it's not not bad but you know you definitely want to have a um, a background that is 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 presentable too as well but have some questions research on the company and uh, and just go from there and, and be relaxed as you can Yeah, I like uh, kind of your tip to make sure that you have kind of both ready, like a virtual background, but you're also kind of in a space that's presentable because uh, some employers use platforms where you're not able to have virtual backgrounds. So I appreciate you uh, for encouraging students to kind of have both ready in case you kind of need to run with that on the spot. Um, great, great tips in there. Um, I see lots of activity in the chat around mentorship. Uh, and preparing for interviews. So students, if you have questions, do go ahead and put those in the chat. We are monitoring them. And then we will have time uh, for audience Q&A in just a bit. All right, so my next question is, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give to students to prepare for the workforce? So we do have a lot of spring 21 grads in the room today who are just entering into uh, career maybe for the first time in a professional role. Um, so maybe kind of reflecting back to when you were in that space, uh, what are some of the things that you kind of wish that you knew at that point? Uh, so Kristen, I'm going to let you take the lead on this one and then Rachel, I'll have you as a follow-up. Thank you, Larissa. So going back to when um, I graduated, I wish um, that I had a little bit more of experience with communication, you know, you're very timid sometimes. Um, and that comes with age, um, you will be able to um, communicate better and write better. So being available to communicate and have your written skills in order. Um, also working as a team, you know, you probably work as a team currently or did when you were a student in many of your um, in many of your classes. Um, so that will go a long way as well when you get into your employer, you know, because we do work as a team. Um, and a lot of solving skills. Um, work ethic is very big. Um, so if you were a great student, I know it will portray in your work in your work history as well when you come to um, working. Um, also being flexible and adaptable because things change all the time. Um, you may start your day and it's going to change. So being aware that in your career, things do change. We're getting things from leadership that's saying, okay, we need to do this now. So we have to change. So um, be flexible, collaborate, and also uh, be a problem solver. Um, because when things come up, we do want be a, people to be able to problem solve what's going on or be a resource, ask questions if you're unsure, um, because we all don't know everything. We're all still learning. Even today, we're still learning. We're still growing. Um, so just um, ask questions if you need to. Yeah, I love that. Change has kind of been the name of the game for the last year, right? We've had major kind of upheaval, but even beyond that and just normal times, just being adaptable uh, and being willing to learn, right? It's going to take you far in a lot of spaces. And I love that you shared that uh, communication is something that maybe uh, is developed over time, right? Because there might be other students in the room that are feeling like really shy, like I can never see myself being on a panel or being a mentor or being a leader. Uh, these are all skills, right? And you can definitely uh, develop and make improvements over time. So I appreciate you for sharing that. Thank you. Uh, Rachel. For me, I personally might be a bit biased because I do have an advanced degree. It does, it does give me a lot of uh, advantage in the workforce. Even before I graduated with my master, I already got the current job right now uh, because of my uh, I.O. program. Like a lot of our alumni in this program always come back to recruit service based students uh, to. So I think picking a program and networking, and basically you would have a, uh, I would say a short path, a shortcut to uh, entering the workforce. And I hope Kerry is more happy because she's the counselor for graduate students. Um, and 
for another advantage is that basically my level is more like a middle level instead of a very entry level even i just enter the workforce uh, basically the people are interact with this director or vp you know corporate and not just like a startup like 10 people of course you can interact with the ceo or chr uh, but in a corporate that's a lot of hierarchy but um like your master degree or your advanced degree does give you some benefit but again it depends on your personal career and personal goal it's not one size fits all. I was strongly encourage students to be more open minded to explore opportunity as much as possible because I've been on multiple panelists, either in San Jose State or even with different uh, university for some psychology club. Basically, like students will ask me, Oh, how do you decide which company to join? I think at the current stage, you wouldn't be the person to pick. I think it's better you get a job to get paid to learn instead of you paying more money to learn. That would be my uh, like a uh, key uh, takeaway from what uh, from what I know or what I have learned from my own experience. Yeah, that's a really kind of interesting kind of takeaway. I really love that kind of nugget of you know get paid to learn rather than paying more to learn. Uh, especially if you're in the stage of kind of like exploring and still figuring out what you want to do. Um, that's a really great strategy to kind of get some exposure to the workplace, see what things you love to do and enjoy. And then if you want to pursue additional education, you can, um, but that at least kind of gives you some time to kind of figure things out. Um, and definitely I can hear not being as picky for the first position, right? Trying things out. Uh, it may not be a job that you love, but you're definitely going to learn some skills from that uh, and some takeaways that are going to help you in your long-term kind of career goals. All right, so um, we're kind of at the end of the preset questions. So students, as a reminder, if you have questions for the panelists, do throw those in the chat now. Um, if you have one that you want to address to a specific panelist, please do put their name so that we can prompt them to answer that for you. Um, I just have one last question for our panelists, and then we'll move on to that Q&A portion. So uh, panelists, if you want to share uh, one final kind of key takeaway or uh, highlight something that you're planning to cover in your small groups, uh, just kind of your final thoughts, reflections at this point, and uh, advice for students. So to kick that off, I will start with Kristen. Thank you, Larissa. Um, so a key takeaway that I would say to the students is um, just be patient. Um, I know you're looking for a job um, and it will come. It may not be the first position that you interview for. It may take you a little bit, um, just but keep on going, keep on doing what you need to do, apply to the positions, be active um, in searching for jobs because we have so many people applying to positions. Um, so um, just being um, open, I guess, open and um, to getting those, um, applying to those different positions because we may like for Kaiser permanent intake, we may have like 10 nursing positions apply to all 10 of them. If you're interested in 10, because you may not get one of them. So, um, and be, and be flexible. If maybe a position that, um, you may be looking for, but there may be a different one that you, just to get your foot in the door. Um, and then you can transfer into another position in the future after you, um, build up your, um, your resume a little bit. Yeah, I really appreciate that kind of reflection that it is kind of a long term goal, right? It's not necessarily right out of the gate, you have to be kind of in that dream role, but there are definitely kind of steps that you can take, uh, and opportunities that you can take to kind of keep you on track to getting there in the long run. So thank you, Kristen. Uh, Rashad, if you want to share kind of your final thoughts, reflections or a preview of what folks can see in your breakup. Yeah, my breakout session, I'm just going to probably just give a, uh, give a little overview of what a credit union credit union is. So maybe that might spark some interest in, in what I learned, what I learned in business too. I'm going to talk about that briefly um, because uh, uh, we're, we're in Silicon Valley. I feel like, you know, this is a, 
entrepreneur headquarters. Uh, they're, they're, they're the same, right? Don't start a business, solve a problem. I feel like that. Um, you know, definitely want to no entrepreneur. That's how, that's how I look at it. But educa education, it, your education is, is the best investment that you can make um, because uh, education will make you a living. But, but um, also invest in, invest in uh, self-education, you know, because self, your self-education can make you a fortune. So don't forget to uh, always continue to learn and grow and develop your, uh, yourself. Definitely. And go Spartans. And go Spartans. <laughs> yes, we have Spartans out in the world doing really amazing things, right? So definitely taking advantage of the power of the network as a grad from our campus. Highly encourage that. Uh, and then, you know, kind of also, you know, staying, staying motivated, whatever that looks like for you, if it means you know, joining something like the job search club. So you have other people that you're searching with or connecting with, you know, a mentor that, uh, you know, can help you kind of keep going. But yeah, definitely, uh, you know, hanging in there and being patient for sure is going to be important at this time. And, 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 then, and, then, and definitely join, join the alumni association too. <laughs> Yes, be part of our alumni association. Like I said, we have really amazing alumni doing really awesome stuff uh, in the Bay Area and beyond. So that's a great connection. Um, and then finally, uh, Rachel, final thoughts, reflections? Um, I think I'll just never give up. Like, I do understand that job century can be very stressful and sometimes very um, discouraging because you might get so many rejections. But you only want that yes to your job, your first job. You don't, but of course, if you can get multiple offers, you can use your offer to negotiate. Um, that would be my uh, final thoughts. Yeah, I love that. I think a lot of students forget that they can negotiate at this point um, and kind of use that to kind of leverage uh, their long-term goals. So appreciate you for sharing that. Uh, so now I'm going to pass it over to Carrie, who's been uh, monitoring the chat for all of your questions for the panelists. Uh, so she's going to go ahead and jump in and moderate those for the panelists. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Larissa. And thank you um, for your pan the panelists so far for all of your insights and information you're sharing with our grads today. So I'm going to start out with a few questions that we have had coming in in chat and then students feel free to keep adding those in. And also want to mention that our new graduate intern, Matthew Floro, is also helping me manage these uh, questions in chat as well. So we're going to be reading them aloud and checking to see new questions as they come in. So I'm going to start with a question for uh, came a little bit earlier and it was for Kristen. And the question was, um, how, do you do hiring for psychology majors? But since that's very specific to one major, maybe just let us know again about what are some of the majors that uh, Kaiser generally does some hiring for outside of maybe healthcare related majors. So this particular student was interested in um, psychology. So yes, um, Kaiser, we do have psychiatric social clerk positions, we have psychiatry, we have social workers. Um, so we do have those types of positions within Kaiser Permanente. So in other words, there's a variety of different types of majors that, that students can look at Kaiser for a variety of possibilities. And yes, a variety of different jobs, not just, has, this doesn't have to be a nurse. It can be any type of position. We have like um, housekeepers, we have receptionists, we have pharmacy, we have pharmacy tech, pharma pharmacists. Um, and just so many positions. Um, you just didn't, wouldn't even think that we have them, but we do. Excellent. Thank you. And that's, again, Kristen will be in a, a room in a little while. So if those students had questions about opportunities at Kaiser, please visit Kristen in her, her room. So I'll go ahead and pick up a, a couple other questions we've had coming in. And um, Rachel, I'll direct this question at you for you to start. Um, when applying for jobs, is it better to apply for a few jobs that fit your criteria rather than applying to, you know, maybe hundreds of jobs all at once? What did you think, what would be the strategy for that? Sorry, I was, oh, wait. <laughs> um, 
I will share from my personal experience and perspective, but um, maybe other panelists have different views. So I will try, I will start with uh, those jobs meeting the criteria. First of all, you would have a higher chance to actually get the interviews. And like, it does take tons of time and uh, mental capacity. And it, it does cause a lot of stress. When you get rejected, you, so, you see so many automated um, robot email saying rejection to you. I don't want to overwhelm me. Uh, so I would say that uh, because of these reasons, I would, the best bet is to start with those already meeting the criteria because you will have higher chance to get a yes so that you will do momentum to keep going. That, that's my answer. Excellent. Thank you. So sort of starting out with a more targeted approach, it sounds like would be the advice for the students. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, another question has come in and maybe Rashad, you can take this question for us. Um, have you ever been in the situation or position where you just couldn't land a job? And if so, what did you do to prepare yourself to start applying again, to keep motivated in applying for jobs? Uh, yeah, when I was um, initially graduating, um, graduated with, in um, May. I, I didn't. I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't start working till August. So there was that time I was applying to different uh, banks and other inst institutions out there, and uh, it, it it is a. Uh, it's just, it's just, you got to know, it's just, that's just the process of it, the process of elimination. So um, I, I know it sounds cliche, but it's, I feel like whatever somebody wants to do, it's going to happen for them. They're going to attract it, right? Law of attraction. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen eventually for you. You just got to stick at it and continue forward um, um, with the job search. Uh, but uh, there's, there's, uh, you know, just keep your option open. I, I would say also, don't uh, to get into something something entry level, uh, and then just continue continue applying. Because when I got to Star One, I I, um, I didn't have the, I didn't have this position, right? I I, I was doing something else. But uh, after so 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 much time so much time there, I wanted to I applied for other positions internally. I didn't I didn't get those positions. But looking back on it, I see what they uh, at a small organization uh, they, they notice people who take take initiative, and so um, I see what, what what Christian was saying about that as far as you know, get, get get your foot in the door and then uh, apply for the apply for those positions because the more interviews you do, the more the more experience you'll have, and uh, and, 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 and who knows that position that person who who they hired before you it might have not worked out and you know. You, uh, you might get you might get that call back. Okay, thank you. There was a question that just came in since we have you, Rashad here. Um, what was your first job since you did not have internships? So students are curious about that. Yeah, that was uh, a leadership development program with U.S. Bank. It was a um, it was a, a two year rotational program uh, where I worked all, all all over the Bay Area from uh, from Pacifica to Los Gatos. Uh, different uh, part part classroom training, part um, on the on the job training is, is one of the biggest challenges I, I I did. But it was it was just the fact that I had I had that um, at least at least some leadership experience, and so that's how I was able to um, to land that position. Very competitive position. I mean, all jobs are kind of kind of competitive in itself. But yeah, that was my first position because. Uh, I only wanted to work in financial services. I never changed my major or anything like that. So, um, yeah. But I also want to say I am a Kaiser member too. Go Kaiser. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So um, another question's come in, and maybe, Kristen, you could um, kick this one off. What are the most important skills? Like, what are the top skills you say that employers might be looking for? So maybe transferable skills or strengths that employers are generally looking for? Um someone that that's adaptable can communicate well flexible um, organized uh, what else can i think of um, showing that leadership qualities um, that you may have um, let me see what else i'm trying to think of anything else um problem solving like kind of like what i was saying before all those skills that you should you, you should portray when you come into an employer um, 
I think are very crucial um, when you um, start working and your work ethic is everything um, because you may start in a position kind of going back to Rashad, you may start in a position, but if you show your work ethic, it goes a long way and it gets noticed. And then you have get other opportunities um, to move up within the company. Thank you. And I pointed out some really important, um, what we think of as transferable skills, strength areas that, that students um, hopefully have developed while they're in college. We also have some tools to help students um, assess their skills and strengths. So if you're interested in any of those new grads, let us know. We have skills inventory and other tools to help you think about what are your top skills and skills you'd like to develop. So thank you, Kristen, for sharing that information. It's very helpful. Um, Rachel, are you still there? I may just pose the next question to you. Um, what, are, what are some things you did right after you graduated to help you stay motivated or keep your momentum up? Uh, did you start looking for jobs right away? Um, what was your focus post-graduation and how did, you, how did you keep the momentum going? So let me clarify, is it for my undergrads or is it for my master? Uh, it, either way, it, it thing, I think the question is really is once you graduate, how do you then kind of get motivated and pick up momentum to sort of embark on a job search or, or what's next for you after, after undergrad okay. or grad? All right, then I think I will first speak to undergrads uh, for those who are interested in uh, getting an advanced degree. So for myself, I already clearly know that I will get an advanced degree, uh, either a master or PhD. So that's why I start exploring job opportunity that align with my personal interests, like good at stats, good at data analysis, good at psychology, good at uh, business or leadership development, that type of things. So that's why I found my dream job called People Analytics. And right now I'm in this space and in, in this role. And uh, so uh, I look through all the job description, like for all the requirements or qualification. And, and then back then I found this gap, they all require advanced degree in a master of beauty. They require some programming skill like in Python or in R. So that's why I go. I went ahead to create a plan how I can address those gaps uh, as an undergrad, which was 2017, uh, end of 2017. Uh, so I went ahead to get my master. And of course, you need to do a lot of research which programs best fit for you. And as I said, I love San Francisco so much. I kept coming back to San Jose State and I got my master here. For those who are grad school students, um, so my program requires internship to actually graduate. So I have to get a job before I even can graduate. So I start looking for a job um, maybe like early last year, like in January or so. Um, and again, just I think tailor your resume is very key to get your first interview because like even all, all those resume um like it does sometimes do not even go to human being to read through it they will go through some type of applicant checking system like basically a machine to match whether you match with the skill and the job before they will actually go to a recruiter to read through them so um that is another tip to build the momentum and um, this is like getting the first interview is a momentum and moving to the next round of interview is also a momentum to spew on that. Uh, even though like you may not make it to the final round, you may not even pass the first round, but remember that every single interview is a great opportunity for you to learn. Take it as a learning opportunity instead of like, oh, I need to do like uh, some type of test. It's super uh, suggestful because I major in psychology. So I will use some psychology to encourage you that uh, look at the positive and change your mindset. Take it as an opportunity to grow and learn, have a growth mindset. I don't have the job yet. I will get the job eventually. Yeah, that's, those are great ways to keep keep motivated through the job search. And, and what you mentioned about learning, learning along the way as you go through interviews and through the process, um, reflecting and learning as you go. Okay, so let's take some other questions here. Um, so there's a question for, um, what is the best way to find a job or internship? Is it through networking, LinkedIn, Handshake, et cetera? So um, maybe Rashad, do you wanna jump in on that? So what would you give advice for students to where would they should look in addition to maybe Handshake? Um, do you have any other 
websites or um, strategies? You know, dog, if, if you're challenged to find a job, I, 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 can I say again, you can you can find a way to start your own job too, right? You be an entrepreneur, have a, have that have that mindset too that you can you can you can do whatever you want to do, right? In life, it's just, that sounds cliche, but it's it's so true. I also want to just mention if anybody um, is on like a desktop, you can save the chat. You just click on the three dots. So if you need to save the chat later, it'll save it to your desktop, and you can have that uh, ability later. I know this is. Super might not be available on the recording, but people who are here live, you can save the chat too as well if you want to ask us some of those resources later on. But um, yeah, networking, I mean, uh, um, you can look at some of the organizations that, are, that already support San Jose State. I know, I know Apple is a big, is a big supporter of San Jose State. Uh, so is Lockheed Martin is a big, is, is a big supporter of San Jose State. So you can go over with, with the companies that, that have already uh, aligned themselves um, anybody who's in the financial services industry, we have the Center for Banking and Financial Services at uh, SJSU that's part of the business department. There's so many um, banks and institutions there um, that um, have all types of jobs, IT jobs, data sciences, sciences jobs, um, that they're supportive of, of SJSU. So you can kind of see, or Maybe there's uh, the departments that you that you um, that you went to school in. They might have some resources there for you, or 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 schools. Sorry, or the companies have supported those particular schools or or, or departments. So yeah, definitely hand handworking, networking, hand, hand working, handshaking, and networking. Uh, have an elevator pitch ready, like a little thirty seconds about yourself too. Um, is definitely because you never know who you're gonna meet, and you know, get some get some SJSU gear and just wear it and see, if, you know, hey, like, hey, well, you see see anybody with some San Jose gear? Like, where do you work at? You know, you kind of just spark that conversation, be bold. Okay, thank you so much. So yeah, port, the importance of networking, and today is an opportunity. This afternoon, we're going to be going into our breakout rooms, an opportunity to do some networking and, and practicing your professional pitch in our breakout rooms this afternoon. So a great opportunity there. So here's another question and maybe Rachel, you could um, take this one. So if the question is, how do you apply for jobs if you don't have the required, the required um, experience? Um, often we see job postings, they entry level, but requires two to five years experience. So that was part of the question. And secondly, would volunteering count towards that experience? I think it depends on the company and um, and the size of the company. If a corporate, they sort of like pretty stupid the rules about the experience. Even I talk to, again, we need to network a lot. Even I personally continue the network with different people. Um, so I talk to LinkedIn managers, talk to Facebook manager who are in my field to ask Oh, uh, the same question. They would tell me that, sorry, because the law, because the regulation, because the policy, they need to stick with the rules. I think Kristen may have more insight because she is in the recruiting field than me. Um, and uh, for some startup, like uh, actually there's quite some startup reach out to me for more advanced rule, like the lead of people analytic, um, the first person to build the analytic teams. People on the team, uh, they require five to seven years experience. I believe they may count my master as some sort of work experience because I did get quite a lot of uh, kind of volunteering experience as I say, state being a research lab manager. So I believe that it depends on the companies and also depends on the size of the company. And they may, some of them may be more flexible, but if you're only looking at the big four, like the bank, may, that will be very strict and I wouldn't recommend you to even try it. And back to handshake, I think uh, the recruiter come to handshake is more target as student audience. Uh, LinkedIn is more target for actually like a senior or and at least like two or three years uh, professionals. Uh, that's some tips or insights I will share. Okay, great. Thank you. Rashad, you had your hand up. Did you want to add something to that? Yeah, I wanted to, um, 
to, to mention, always follow up with the, uh, some type of a handwritten note to the interviewer or some type of an, an, an email, uh, a courtesy email thanking them for their time and that, you know, that you're still interested in the position. Just, just, just make sure you follow up at least once with the, with the interview, interviewer or whoever you're, you're talking to. Yeah, thank you. That was a question that was in, uh, in the chat. So um, if you wanted to add maybe more to that, Kristen, the question was, um, after an interview, should you follow up and with who? With HR or the recruiter or manager um, after an interview? What advice would you have around that? Sure. Um, I do get a lot of people that um, do send me an email back um, thanking me for their time. Um, and if you get an interview with a manager, some have the information to contact that manager, um, except maybe by phone. Um, so I always let them know you can send it to me and I can forward it on. So you could do both, um, send it to your recruiter and they can forward it to the manager to thank them for your time as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much. There are several questions for you, Kristen. So I would think that probably since we're running low on time now for the um, audience Q&A, that the students, if you had questions for Kristen regarding Kaiser and other opportunities, please visit her in her breakout room in a little bit here. Um, so you could talk with her more about the particular opportunities and questions you have about Kaiser. So we are at one o'clock. I, I think we are now are maybe transitioning into our next um, phase of our event today. Thank you so much panelists for answering all the students' questions. And again, thank you students for putting them in chat.